there, tennis fanatics. I'm Carrie Milbank, and this is Tennis Week, your source for everything on and off the court in World of Tennis, presented by Babylon. Where, oh, where to begin? Surely a memorable U.S. Open. Uh, shall we say start with the first men's five-set final since Agassi and Todd Martin tangled in 1999? Or how about with cute world number eight, Caroline Wozniacki, making her first slam final and going against fan favorite Kim Kleisters? How about nope and nope? While it is usually serves forehands and backhands, described as bombs, it was Serena Williams' F-bombs that will define this 2009 U.S. Open. Serena Williams, now infamous, uh, let's call it a run-in over what was a bad foot fault call, has given the media pundits of the world lots of fodder for show-ending rants. Already down one set, being outplayed by Kleisters, Williams down 4-5, 15-30, was called for a foot fault, giving Mama Kim a match and break point. This caused Serena to drop the F word quite liberally, saying, I swear to God, I'm effing going to take this effing ball and shove it down your effing throat. You hear that? I swear to, you know, him. So I think we all know the end to this story. A remarkable effort by the Kleisters, who is playing in only her third tourney since returning to the WTA Tour, defended her 2005 Open title by being the first ladies wild card ever to win a Grand Slam and the first mom to win a major since Yvonne Goolagong won Wimbledon in 1980. So on Monday, what was the tennis world abuzz with? Yeah, you guessed it. Twitter. Williams, who released a statement through the WTA on Sunday, has offered an apology via the 140 character or less mouthpiece of the world saying, hey guys, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. I want to amend my press statement of yesterday and want to make it clear as possible. I want to sincerely apologize first to Lions woman Kim Kleisters, USTA, and tennis fans everywhere for my inappropriate outburst. I'm a woman of great pride, faith, and integrity, and I admit when I'm wrong. Well, there are many lessons to be learned here. First and foremost, swallow your whistles, refs. You know, there's a reason that my legendary chair ump Frank Hammond cards aren't worth anything. Head on over to the message boards and let us know whose apology you buy more, Serena or Kanye. Outside of Twitter, there was a tennis match of some significance played on Monday. The most dominant man in all of sports put his 40 match and five straight title defenses on the line against up-and-comer Juan Mac Del Potro. Del Potro, having beaten Rafa soundly in the semis, was trying to do something even more impressive than Federer, mainly because it's never been done in a slam event, beat both Nadal and Darth Federer in the same tournament. When it became the longest final in 20 years at 4 hours and 6 minutes, Del Potro's nerves should have bowed to the aura Federer has worked so hard to craft, but instead it was Roger who saw his forehand unraveled making the 6'6 six six Argentine the tallest open era champ, winning easily 6-2, going away in the fifth set. Already much improved in only one year, and with the confidence of beating a great champ on a big stage, Del Potro will have stratospheric expectations on his broad shoulders. That's going to do it for now. I'm Carrie Milbank, and I'll serve you later.